You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Ludes. Ahead tonight, lawmakers coming together to get a massive government funded budget bill completed. We'll have the details coming up. Plus some promising recovering news for a Montana hero shot in the line of duty. We'll have an update on the condition of trooper Wade Palmer. But first, it may seem early, but fire season is already a concern after a wildland fire broke out in the Great Falls area. Tonight, crews are mopping up that fire and nearby homeowners are breathing a sigh of relief after evacuations were ordered. The fire started between Sun Prairie and Fairfield. Departments from Sims and Fort Shaw responded after the call came in at around 4 p.m. The fire was started by a burn pit. No injuries were reported. And also tonight, crews in western Montana cleaning up after a brush pile got out of control. Take a look at these photos from the Superior Volunteer Fire Department's Facebook page. They assisted St. Regis with this fire as it got out of control just before 5 p.m. tonight. Some promising news when it comes to a Montana Highway Patrol trooper shot in the line of duty and recovering at a Utah hospital tonight. MTN's Kent Ludson joins us now on an update for Wade Palmer as today it was announced that he's regained consciousness. Thanks, Andrea. Although we don't know the long term prognosis of his recovery, we are sharing some great news today. Trooper Palmer was been in critical condition for the past two weeks. His status today has been moved to stable. This all started on March 15th when Trooper Palmer was shot in the neck, face and head after locating a suspect involved in an earlier shooting, which injured two and killed one in Missoula. Palmer was immediately taken to St. Pat's Hospital and ultimately flown to Salt Lake City, where he continues to be treated. John Barnes with the Montana Department of Justice reports all of Trooper Palmer's interactions have been nonverbal. However, he has been able to recognize certain people and certain commands. We're also learning that Trooper Palmer is going to undergo reconstruction surgery for his jaw, and this is going to happen on Thursday. Trooper Palmer has been moved from the University of Utah's Neurological Critical Care Unit to a neuroacute care unit. Now, this care unit specializes in treatment for people recovering from neurological trauma. Now, again, Trooper Palmer has a long road of him ahead of him, but family and friends remain hopeful. Andrea, back to you. All right, Kent, thanks so much on that update. Well, tonight, a Missoula man is behind bars charged with leading police on a high speed chase, nearly hitting oncoming traffic while going the wrong way. Police say 29 year old Kevin O'Quist struck a Chinese restaurant with his car or truck. And then as they tried to pull him over, he sped off going the wrong way on Orange Street onto I-90. Then his car went off the road. He ran, but he was caught. He faces criminal endangerment charges. A retired Great Falls Catholic priest will plead guilty to viewing thousands of pictures of child pornography. Lothar Krauth will appear in court on April 8th. Federal agents received a tip about a child porn incident in October of last year. Agents searched his home, found thousands of images of child pornography. Krauth was assigned to Our Lady of the Lord's Catholic Church until the year about 2014. Tonight, a Democrat is announcing his run for Montana's seat in Congress for 2020. 32 year old Tom Winter of Missoula says he is running for the U.S. House seat. Winter just won the state legislative seat last fall. He wants to make health care a top issue. I believe deeply that health care is, is really points to the deep inequities that we see between Montana and the rest of the country and within Montana as well. And everyone needs access to good quality health care and good quality health insurance. And we're not seeing that. Montana's current congressman Greg Gianforte may run for governor of Montana. Former candidate for Congress Kathleen Williams is making a 2020 announcement. It's going to happen Friday in Billings. And Montana Congressman Greg Gianforte taking aim at Washington State when it comes to climate change. Washington Governor Jay Inslee wants to ban coal fired electricity and blocked a coal export terminal in his state. Gianforte says Washington is a big customer and Montana would lose five billion dollars in revenue if coal strip retires. You know, today in your state house, you're considering a bill that would eliminate all coal fired electricity. Uh, much of this electricity is generated in Montana and uh, particularly in the town of, town of coal strip. It's a small town, 2300 people. Their livelihoods are threatened. Governor Jay Inslee is joining a growing number of Democratic candidates that are running for president. Gianforte invited him to visit 
coal strip. At the Montana Legislature, it looks like lawmakers will have a final version of a massive government-funded budget bill, but as usual, not everyone is pleased. MTM's chief political reporter, Mike Dennison, gives us an inside look at the proposal. The state's $10 billion two-year budget is as close to being completed, but right now, among other things, it doesn't include a requested increase for rates paid to those operating assisted living homes for the elderly. Home operators and their supporters say without this increase, they can't afford to take more state-funded poor residents, who then could end up being in a more expensive nursing home or the state hospital. They have to have a place to go. They have to. We want to be one of those, but we need help. And this is where we come back to you guys. This is where we need help, and that's all we're asking. But that help costs $3 million in state funds over the next two years, and so far, those crafting the budget have rejected it. The bill to fund the increase won endorsement by the House on an 89 to 10 vote last Friday, but then was killed by the House Appropriations Committee. And in the Senate Finance and Claims Committee last week, an amendment to add the money was voted down. Veteran Republican Senator Bob Keenan of Big Fork offered and voted for the amendment and says it died because a select group of people working on the budget have decided it doesn't fit. What happened to these people from all over the state of Montana that might have a good idea? Some people that might have good productive solutions are not part of the solution and they're not given an opportunity. The game has already been fixed. Shortly before the Senate panel voted on amendments to the budget bill, it took a break and committee members met privately in their respective party caucuses to go over the proposed amendments. Sources told MTN News that members were advised which amendments should pass and which should not. Senate Minority Leader John Sesso, the ranking Democrat on the panel, says their meeting informed members on all of the amendments and where Democrats stood. Both Sesso and Republican Committee Chair Ryan Osmondson also say the meetings are an extension of talks that have been ongoing for weeks about the budget, with lawmakers, lobbyists, and the governor's office. There's discussion from the day we start the legislature to the day we vote. And whether that's in, in caucus meetings, whether that's in you know small groups of us meeting, to decide certain issues. It's certainly true that there is a limited number of legislators who are working hard in the evenings and, and, and every day to try to shape it. But at the end of the day, we got to put the thing in front of our peers, and, both on the floor and in committee, and do these amendments. Those not on the budget panels can try to amend the bill when it hits the Senate floor on Thursday. But once it leaves the Senate, it may be complete and end up going to the governor for his signature. Sesso and Osmussen say they believe the budget is in pretty good shape, with compromises made on both sides. As for the assisted living money, it may be in there or it may not. But Sesso says it's just one of many program proposals that so far haven't made the cut. Everybody's going to leave this session with certain of their priorities unfunded. And then at the same time, uh, we're going to leave with a balanced budget where we try to meet as many of the critical needs of the state as possible. It's a difficult deal, and uh, we have to make tough choices. Reporting from the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, in a tie vote, lawmakers strike down a bill that could help close Montana's gender, gender wage gap. All of this on what's considered equal pay day. In Montana women earn 27% less than their male counterparts. Governor Steve Bullock joined business leaders today to bring attention to the wage gap. He launched even an equal pay task force. Their good work and the work of employers all across the state really does deserve recognition. However, we, as you're hearing today, the numbers tell us there is still so much more to do before we can all say we've stood up for all Montanans. I think that everyone should at least listen to what this committee has to say about equal pay and think about it as an employer for the women that you have employed for you. Listen to it, think about it. It's only fair. While officials say the wage gap is shrinking, it's not enough. The gap is down from 33% in 2013. However, Montana still higher than the national average. Billings is looking at adding two fire stations to the city. Fire Chief Bill Rash says Billings has grown and public safety has to keep up. Billings Fire experienced a 51% increase in service calls in recent years. They want to add two fire stations, complete with apparatus and staffing. However, the last public safety levy 
was passed about 15 years ago. Brash wants a station on the West End and then another one south on King Avenue West. Still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, we'll tell you what Big Sky School District is doing to retain its teachers as the cost of living in that resort town continues to rise. And meteorologist Erin Yost tells us if the sunny skies will continue across much of Montana. She's got your full forecast after the break.